Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be breaking down a sparring footage between Adam, James, Chris and myself. I've sparred these lot quite a bit and it should be quite interesting just reading the patterns that we've got used to. Anyway, first round is between Adam and James. I hope you enjoy it. If you do, please remember to like, subscribe and share. Okay, so here we go. So James immediately on the pressure on the forward foot. Although here we can see how the kick is lured out from Adam from stepping forwards and then backwards. A couple of leg kick exchanges here. And then we see Adam pivot off with the hook and just about get off from the punch to then set up the low kick after. Here we see the use of the cross to set up the body kick underneath. And then we see the cross being utilized after the kick to kind of cover the kick on the exit. Another hand trap here that pushes Adam's hand up and then a use of the front kick to the leg to kind of interrupt Adam's movement a little bit. And then Adam's kind of utilizing it back. The utilization of the parry and head movement worked quite well to get off the straight punch and then add counter, although James tracked this quite well with his own punch. More head movement from Adam to get out of the incoming shots and using the lateral movement to get himself out the corner. Here once again we see the utilization of step forwards to lure out Adam's inside low kick and here we can see that the low kick landed for James, but also Adam looked counter. As can be seen here, the jab is utilized down the middle and then more head movement and lateral movement to get out the corner. After this check, Adam once again goes for the parry and head movement off to the side, but is getting caught a little bit with the incoming herding shots of James. And here we see more hand trapping, pulling the arm away kind of keeping the range and then we see Adam return with the body head shots from the right side returned with the herding of the kicks from James. Here we just see a bit of an exchange between the two of them James tracking and Adam once again using the movement to get out of the way more center line shots from Adam and more over the top shots from James Adam uses the same tactic as James and gets an inside this time to get off the jab and some good utilization of the checking as well as some hand fighting going on. Here more exchanges, James using his pressure and volume to get the shots through for the end of the round. Okay so round two between Chris and James and immediately you can kind of see Chris using a lot of movement side to side as well as James countering this by chopping the legs away and trying to deduct the movement a little bit. More inside control here and leg kicks. And Chris is using a lot of jabs to try to interrupt James a little bit on the incoming shots and a front kick to keep the distance as well as a left hook over the top where James kind of tracks to keep the pressure on afterwards. As we can see, the moving of the guard is being really effective, especially for James. And it means that it's harder to get your own strikes off because it cuts away one of your hands. And here we see Chris use the left hook again, but this time he grabs the leg to counter the low kick. Chris goes straight back to this left hook in which James seems to cover with his shoulder and this means that the hook can come over the top sometimes if there's an enough commitment to it. James jams the jab to then get the low kick off and whenever you throw a jab your weight goes onto that front leg so it leaves it a bit more vulnerable and here we can see more attacks to the leg as well as more left hooks being used to try to come over the top. So the jam is used here once again to push Chris back, but Chris does a good job of ducking under and using some of his wrestling to then go into a clinch scenario. And here we see a bit of a tussle between the two of them to fight for control 
although we aren't doing any takedowns in this round so it's more to do with striking within the clinch and finding the dominant position and unfortunately they go off camera here so that signifies the end of the round round three james versus myself so james is immediately on the forward pressure knowing that i like to have distance and using a lot of the hand trapping techniques we've been talking about here we can see it be utilized and i'm just trying to keep the movement going and using the side kicks and stuff to try to keep a bit of distance inspired by the usman knockout i look to pull the hand down and then throw my cross over the top which seems to be working quite effectively recently and here we see james catch my leg after i do this check so here i return with a side slash front kick which gets caught and then i end up getting pushed back against the cage more forward pressure switching the stances meaning that i'm having to deal with both stances as well as the herding of the kicks to keep me in one space here i just check and then i go for this pivot hook as adam did earlier and then returned with the body kick which actually comes in twice underneath where it's in between the low kick and the body interrupting my movement and forcing me to start a new exchange and get out of there. James's body kick once again isn't blocked completely clean but I do manage to get a count off with the jab however James keeps the pressure going and lands a couple shots off screen then I throw the side kick which I've been trying to practice more to keep distance and here I try to use the movement and just about to get out of the way of the grab and then cross like Adam I'm using my head movement to get me off of the shots although James times my entries with low kicks when he knows my leg is going to be heavy on the ground because my leg is light here it goes to the body which isn't well protected there and once again I'd look to go for a bit more of the hooks to get around and out but I'm getting kind of interrupted by these kicks and that time I actually managed to move my leg just out of time there mixing in more kick exchanges in which James keeps lifting up his knee making it quite hard for me to kick cleanly and the parries make it difficult for me to land a clean straight punch here I have some good utilization of head movement and parrying to get my counter left off but I could have followed it up with a little bit more strikes than just a singular one. James throwing more low kicks that kind of catch me as I'm coming forwards. Here I fake low and then go high so get the hook over the top of the guard. And then James continues with the pressure and this causes me to actually be put off balanced resulting in an attempted spin and the end of the round. Round four, Adam versus myself. So Adam being slightly taller actually is quite a different kind of fight to the one against James. So quite a bit of movement between the two of us here. And I'm trying to do that double jab cross feint to kind of put off the timing to get that cross in. And here Adam uses a good fake to get in. And then I look to return with more crosses and left body kicks. So what I do here is I pivot off to the side to set up my body kick. So a lot of the punches were just there to get the hands to go high for the body shot. A side kick. And then Adam does a cool feint for the switch which lures my kick out to be checked. And then more pressure forwards until I actually go around to the side. And Adam tracks me quite well with this body shot and low kick as I go around. As I enter, I land my own jab, but Adam does a good job of throwing out his own small jabs, and he's kind of just tapping me on the entrance to keep me honest on my defense. A well-timed low kick as I look to enter with my hands, and a good oblique kick here to open my stance out and make me a bit more square on for the attacks. Once again, I move right to get Adam to move right as well, into the left high kick which is actually quite well blocked and more jabs used both ways with some kicks introduced in there 
So rewinding back here, Adam does a good job of actually stepping and smothering my low kick so that I was in a bad position. And then here I look to spin, but get the distance wrong through the smother and actually get parried. And once again, that oblique kick battle is back on. And I use this a little bit for a bit of fun to feint and then deceivingly come in with the cross, changing the speed. Adam is playing with my hand here, which allows me to set up that uppercut and cross from a different angle and the jab to go upwards as well until I get spot kicked through the cage. Recently, I've been emphasizing calf kicks a little bit more, of course, with the trend. And here I throw two, just about get around the shin and it kind of disbalances. And this probably caused Adam to try to disbalance me with the oblique kicks. Here I step to the outside as a southpaw to get that cross off, then go the other direction. But Adam tracks my stance switch with the low kick and that signifies the end of the round. Okay, so round five between Chris and myself. And I begin with starting him with a lot of low kicks just to interrupt Chris a little bit to reduce the hooks of Chris a little bit and disbalance him out of position. Chris here is fainting quite a bit with his jab, keeping the pressure on. And I look to throw the side kick just to create a bit more space for myself and mix up the kicks. However, this time as I exit, Chris tracks me with the low kick and I come forward with a fake step into the hook, which Chris rides really well and then throws his own real quick reactionary hook over the top. A lot of battling of the front hand, especially since we're in different stances and Chris seems to be getting a bit more of the advantage here. So therefore I throw in some kicks to try to change it from more of a boxing to kicking fight. Another low kick as I look to exit and throwing quite a bit of jabs to the body to open up the head. But I'm nearly counted there with the left hook and I'm put out of position as I throw the kick here, the left hook once again. And Chris just maintains this pressure, pushing my hand away and trying to get on the inside. I use the jabs here to try to get a parry reaction and then throw the kick around over the top but Chris is fairly wise to this and doesn't get through. Here Chris herds my movement by spinning through and then stepping in with a couple of punches that fortunately I move out of the way of, just about. More hand fighting here, which kind of gets us the timing of each other and I throw in the kick as the hand is up and look to throw a couple of question mark kicks, which Chris is quite wise to. Chris this time times it and comes forward, which keeps me honest with my kicks, makes sure that I'm not just throwing any lazy kicks out there and getting away with it. And here, once again, just about getting out of the way of the left hook, which is a super quick reaction, and there's a good low kick just there off screen. Here I switch stances and look for the grab, then southpaw cross, which could have done with a follow up, then a left high kick, where Chris gets to the outside of my hand to control my hand and set up this spin, which unusually I throw a side kick as well, so it kind of is a funny ending to that round. Round six, Adam versus James. So here, immediately with the hand traps and the movement, James setting a higher pace of pressure in which Adam is kind of grabbing. However, under the pressure, James is managing to land tight shots to the body and head whilst kind of moving and rolling with the strikes coming back his end. So we begin this exchange with a check and then James grabs the hand, steps through and is kind of pushing forwards, which causes the cable tie to come off. Gonna have to fix that. And then James grabs the top of the head and sets up the uppercut. So using the grabs to set up strikes afterwards and slot them in and then you can see me in the background just grab it and then a good exchange between the two adam going body head then james continuing on with the kick to the cross 
and Adam repeating the same combination again, using the front kick as a bit of a deterrence for distance. But James just continues with his forward pressure, moving his head a little bit more here and throwing his strikes straight down the middle to counter Adam's hooks and then setting up the kick quite nicely under the elbow, just keeping the pace and being a bit one step ahead here although the hooks occasionally are landing for Adam. James dictating the pace a little bit here, catching Adam on the inside and moving Adam into the punches, whilst once again utilising a bit more head movement. More herding combos, and Adam is just looking to move, and he uses some good checks and parries here to counter, although James will just continue on with the combinations, which ultimately gives an advantage and then the pressure of the clinch where James is using quite good head positioning and pressure getting in the body shots underneath. A good use of the knee as Adam looks to push forwards, getting on the balls of the feet, then using the punch around on the outside of the underhook James controls the arm quite well here to set up the knee and once again I'm just clearing the space. Once again you can see how the head positioning is making a big difference for who's dictating the control and the clinch which allows one person to throw more strikes than the other person. Although Adam's doing a good job of trying to get the underhooks but the height is actually paying as a disadvantage within this clinch and more good knees to finish the round. Start of round seven, James versus myself again. So starting off with a lot of hand trapping again and a lot of low kicks to counter my movement and also whenever I throw a punch, my weight tends to go heavy on the leg. Here I'm looking to check a little bit more but the utilisation of the body kicks means it comes over the check and in the middle and once again that low kick to kind of negate my movement a little bit and herd me in a direction. After checking I see the left kick, I don't expect the spin but the side kick works quite well to keep the distance and here I'm just looking to use my head movement to get out of the way of the punches although they might not be landing it kind of gets me out of the way of James's pressure and there you can see once again using the hooks to move my head off centre line and strike back. So a bit of a clinch battle here and James uses his hand to push me back and therefore controlling the clinch exchange a little bit more and then using the kick to try to keep me herded and close. Now I use the parry and the jab and the hook to move me away and once again doing the same thing just moving one way then the other way to get out of the corner and using my head position here to keep me away from getting too low in the clinch. On the break James lands a good body kick and this puts me on the back pedal but fortunately I'm able to counter with the hook although James gets good head control here and just about misses the uppercut and continues with the forward pressure, stepping through after I try to move my head on the kick and landing the cross. James's forward pressure moves him into the right hand of the top and then I use the front kick, although James always brings up his knee which means that it's actually quite uncomfortable for me to throw this kick and deters me from wanting to throw it. More kick exchanges and this time I'm able to just about parry that hand and get off a combination which I just throw more of because usually I'm throwing a lot of single strikes here. A kick to the far leg and then another kick after this. Just heard me one way then the other way. Bit of head control but I'm able to get out by punching my way with the hook and here the front kick is caught using the knee to shelf my leg up and then the head control into the clinch. Final round, round eight, Chris versus Adam. And here, 
Chris uses a lot of jabs to start off with, and you see the oblique kick being used by Adam to just interrupt a bit of Chris's movement. But yeah, a lot of multiple jabs to come forwards and a frame being utilized to keep the distance. And here we see how the jabs are being effective, stopping Adam from throwing as much. But here, a nice slip into the body shot, but then the natural jab to the body from Chris as well. Adam now uses his own jab to keep the distance and then does this split switch off to the side, which is quite an effective way of changing the angle, but then is getting countered with Chris's jabs, which have been frequent and often to set up this left hook and cross that just glances off. And once again, more jabs in between Adam's hooks. Adam mixing up his jabs into low kicks, but then Chris grabbing, coming in with his own flurry of punches. Once again, another split switch to change the angle and a bit of fainting by Adam, where he's caught by Chris's quick reactionary hook, which is then returned by an overhand right. A good bit of head movement here to slip the jab, but then once again, a good frame off to stop any clinch scenario. And then Chris starts to dig into the body later in this round as Adam raises his hands to protect his head. Here, Adam faked the right hand into the left kick. But then once again, Chris is coming forwards with his flurries. And he's kind of looking to raise Adam's hands higher so that he can get the body shots underneath. As you can see here, this is when the hands are raised up, the jabs are coming in and this sets up the right hook heard into the left body shot and that hits the sweet spot right into the liver. Okay, so they reset uh, just to finish off the round. A couple of tap jabs from Chris and then there's a bit of a repeat here so Adam counters it with a low kick. And once again, Chris looks to do it and Adam counters with a low kick. Then there's a bit of an exchange between the two of them and a jab, just missing with the uppercut on the return. And once again, finishing that low kick. Cool. Thank you for watching. Let me know your feedback. And I'll see you next time for another video.